So, a little disclaimer at the start of Welsh Wednesdays is last week we said we would be talking about the Tredegar Medical Society, which is the inspiration for the NHS. I forgot that. <laughs> and I'm just going to give you some information on corgis instead. <laughs> Hello, Krista E. Welsh Wednesdays. Welcome to Welsh Wednesdays, where every week, uh, myself, Kira Pritchard McLean, uh, chats to my friend Katie Gill Williams. We both speak as Welsh learners, and we pick a different subject about Wales. Have a good old scurs chat about it, and then we try and have a scurs bach and gumrai. Do you know about corgis? Tim Bead, Tim Bead. Nothing. I thought, are they Welsh dogs then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just the queen has them. Um, yeah. What else? That That is it. They're sort of originally, for a while anyway, in like dog showing worlds, treated as one breed. And um, they decided to separate them in like the 30s because what would happen is they're, they, they are similar but different. And in fact, they think they originate from completely different dogs. So um, I'll, tell, I'll try and give you a little bit of history on each. From completely different lineages, the Cardiganshire, which is the bigger of the two, is the easiest way to sort of say it. That came from like a German line of dogs like Dachshunds, and, and German Shepherds as well, they think is in there. Because if you look at it, it is like a long German Shepherd. It's got those big ears. Um, and whereas the Pembrokes are from Nordic Spitz. Um, and uh, the Pembrokes, are, the first record of them is um, about 1080 AD in Britain. Whereas the Cardigan Shures are, um, had been here a lot longer than that. They're, well, like a thousand years longer than that debate over where the name corgi comes from so cor gi gi is a mutation of key which means dog and cor um means well there's two there's two theories one is that it's dwarf in welsh so dwarf dog because they've only got little legs and the other theory is that it's from cur um which was an old i think nordic word for a um for basically a mongrel that was quite aggressive and quite loud. No. Corgis are famously very noisy. They bark a lot and they chat. Like they'll be like, rawr, 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 rawr. they'll like chat, chat as if they can speak to you and they'll sort of speak to themselves. Um, they're so much like me as a dog. Like main characteristics, talks to itself, too much hair, short legs, prone to weight gain, quite aggressive with people it doesn't know very well like it's all very very me as a dog <laughs> no. really interesting to see how the two different um counties use the dogs so they're driving dogs cattle cattle dogs um known as healers and that's why they've got those little legs because if um they're sort of moving cattle around and a cow kicks it'll go straight over its head it didn't in the case of my dog it's stamped on the middle of his back and we have the problem that we have now <laughs> <laughs> but that is it's like designed to basically sort of go under the the cattle now it's it, if you go back far enough into um agricultural history there was a time where there were no fences um, and it was all sort of common land so corgis were used to keep the cattle they were a, a living fence they would keep them in where they were and um what we had in wales was we had loads and loads of cattle we didn't really have sheep at the time but we used to drive the cattle down to london look at me saying we like i was there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they drive them down to London to, or, or into England anyway to sell them because they, you know, Wales was like pumping out. It's weird that it's got the sheep sort of um, connotation because it was actually cattle that it was first known for. And then what the, so what the corgis used to do is they would run ahead and they would alert um, the people driving the cattle uh, to any wolves or robbers or things. And that's why they're so noisy and they're quite snappy is because they'd be like, oi, it's kicking off over here. They introduced fences and um, there was legislation brought in that, you know, that things would land was divided. Um, and so you don't need a, a, 
an animal to herd them in then. So now they changed to be driving dogs. So they would push the cows forward when they would take them to market. So instead of running ahead of them, they would push them forward. And in fact, my father remembers, because he grew up in Cardiganshire, um, farmers years and years ago, I mean, this is going back to probably the 40s, 50s, would, um, they'd, you know, he he sells, although my father is a, um, what is the Welsh word for? A compulsive liar. Um, <laughs> Malikachi. He, um, he says he remembers they'd take them to market, uh, that you know, they'd drive them there, and then the uh, farmers would get a train back, and then the dogs would turn up about two days later. Pembrokes are much more petite, and their tail isn't as big. Most people think their tails are short, but that's because they have historically been docked. So the ones you see with like a, a big fat sort of like marshmallow bum and like the queen has, that's because they all have docked tails. They've actually got like, it's like a little fox's brush um, and they're quite foxy looking dogs. But most people think they don't have a tail, but it's because they have been docked so much. Um, now, Pembroke is a much flatter county. Um, so they're not as sort of hench, um, whereas Cardiganshire is... Uh, lots of hills and it's quite harsh so the dog is much bigger it, its bones are shaped differently so the Pembrokes have little oval shaped feet and whereas the Corgis have like they, they turn out like Julie Andrews <laughs> you know, the, the stereotype for people from Cardiganshire that they're really tight with money it's oh. you know short arms long pocket <laughs> stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it makes sense that they would have a dog that be able to live on fresh air and still put on weight um so yeah they well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'd be like i'm having skips is there only 80 calories a bag <laughs> means you can have four <laughs> yeah so they um they do put on weight easily and you can't give them too many snacks and things like that they save the breed they have loads and loads of energy like they'll just run and run and run and you can't exhaust them that is not the case with my dog <laughs> before the accident he would like he'd run around but he would just also like go and like collapse if he got to he was just like lie there like <gasps> he's not like a collie that would run all day he's he's quite atypical in a lot of ways um they also talk about how intelligent the breed is he is the thickest dog i've ever le owned in my life he is weapons grade stupid he's like really stupid to the point that it's good because he's broken his back he can't walk he's yet to clock on like he's that thick he's like my bum's a bit heavy today but that's it like he can't figure it out <laughs> is he cardiganshire he is yeah and they're the ones that are just a bit like uh, more hench yeah well i what was how? yeah because <laughs> and also the color he is is very unusual in pembroke because i don't even know if it happens so he's a blue merle which is where it's like a little bit of every color and sometimes they have one blue eye and sometimes they have two blue eyes which key has my dog has two blue eyes jonathan all he kept saying the other night was look at key's eyes got lovely eyes i was like all right johnny <laughs> let's leave you alone with the dog <laughs> He has got really intense eyes. And um, when we lived in Manchester, the kids would be like, what's wrong with your dog? Why has he got no eyelids? And Mike, he has got eyelids. He's just he's got blue eyes. So I think he is, like you said about the Nordic lineage, maybe. Do you think that's those blue eyes? I don't know. I like can see him in a polo neck. <laughs> in a Scandinavian film, like, yeah, solving a murder. <laughs> Pembrokes, they tend to be a bit plainer. They tend to be red and white, like the Queen has, or um, black and white, or um, a black tan and white as well. And it's very unusual for them to be blue male. There's a bit more variation in the Cardiganshires, who um, also have much bigger ears, like big pointy ears. And that's why they're such good watchdogs. Um, like he just, my dog looks mad. He looks like. Um, <laughs> It, we we say in our house we when we refer to him we say um where's that pig that thinks he's a dog dressed as a fox <laughs> because he's like horrible <laughs> snuffly little pig that loves food and like he snorts when he eats it's absolutely disgusting but it obviously thinks he's a dog but it's clearly dressed as a fox <laughs> yeah. they have a short coat like that and then a much longer coat that goes over the top of it which means that the water doesn't penetrate and also mud gets stuck to this longer bit. So what happens with the corgi is they'll get absolutely filthy and then whatever they come and lie down on, 
all the mud will come off and they'll be clean. It's like it's it's they're self cleaning basically, and so it's a bit weird. They survived the Second World War in terms of, but there wasn't many. And yeah, they hit the endangered list. I think about the two thousands, um, which means that there was less than three hundred dogs. And the Cardiganshires have never really come off the endangered. Um, and I think when I got key, there was about forty pups born that year in the whole of the UK, which is not very much. Whereas the Pembrokes, as of about two thousand and fifteen, have gone. They went on the endangered list briefly. They've always been popular because of the Queen. They went on the endangered list briefly and then their sh- popularity is shot up and they're off the list. Um, and they think it's because of the internet. Yeah. Because Can corgis they- are everywhere. Are they thoroughbred? So what's the so what's a thoroughbred and what's a, so corgis, have they been bred to be like that style of dog? I have no idea what I'm talking about with dogs. Do you know what I mean? Like that brand. Yeah, so I, I know what you mean. So um tiny little thing that's a common misconception that actually I flagged on a on a um <laughs> on a quiz show I was on and I got overruled and I checked it afterwards and I was right. Lots of people think a thoroughbred, because it comes from horse the horse world, thoroughbred means a, a purebred or a pedigree. A thoroughbred is actually a type of horse. Um, but but and it's the one that you see in horse racing and uh, yeah but it's it's basically horse racing is is the easiest reference for it and um, but people think because they hear it oh that means something's purebred so sorry to be a pedant um, <laughs> but I'm still very angry with guessable for overruling me <laughs> I was like did I go to pony club for nothing um, so. Yeah, although it looks like a mongrel, it is a pedigree dog. So it, it's descended from the, the corgis are sen- descended from sort of Nordic ones like the Swedish Valhund, which I love as a dog. If you look at Swedish Valhund, it looks like a more squat corgi, whereas the corgi's got longer backs. So they would have been bred with something like a dachshund, perhaps, to, to sort of make it lower and longer to be better for the job. My dog's gorgeous, although I realised looking up all the the characteristics about the breed we've always joked that he's a is a big boy he is abnormally large <laughs> like the he's a big boy it's <laughs> really big he's got like his paws are not much smaller than my hands and i have big hands for a woman right <laughs> he's, he's got like he's got really stuff his tail is is massive it's the most like fabulous thing and his ears as well are like really big they're probably like the length and like width of my face it's like He's, he's a weird looking thing. And on all the things are like, oh, the boys will be bigger and they'll be up to this size. Now I know for a fact that he's like lost loads of weight because his muscles have wasted away. And we weighed him the other day and the maximum size the dog is meant to be, my dog is that with a broken ass. So I think he's just like a really hench big boy. They give them, you know, you have show names for dogs. They have all have passports with like a show name. So his... His line of family all have Duer in the name, so water. Um, and the dog does love water as well. He's always like sat in it. Um, he loves sitting in water when he gets too hot. Um, but they were also a family that was really into Manchester United. So Key's official name is Duer Rooney. <laughs> Do you support Man United? No. It's it's a I, I it's weird I don't always know with farming and agricultural world what everyone knows and what people don't. Oh my god, whole like whole new world. None of this. This is so glamorous that the dogs have got like an alias and their name. No, I, I know nothing about like I've, I've never ridden a horse. I've had one dog. My mum had a dog called Maggie, um, who was a Yorkshire Terrier, but a really placid one. Like she defied all the characteristics of Yorkshire Terriers. She was, oh my God, I loved her so much. But no, we never really had, there wasn't an animal person growing up. It's not that I don't like them. Um, I think after I had to nurse my hamster, Bam Bam, whose eyes were literally coming out of its, like that's how it died from its eyes coming out of its head, which is quite a common thing in hamsters. When he goes, that's going to be really difficult. But the key is, I got this from my mother, is when the dogs start to get old and get, 
to go downhill, get a puppy <laughs> because it usually gives them a bit of a lease of life, the other dog, the older dog. And also it's just much easier to deal with one dog dying when you still have another one, <laughs> which is really dark. Um, Dwi'r meddwl mae bwysig i cadw a bridio um, a corgi um, ceredigion neu Betty Pembroke in Sir Benfro. Be? Sir Benfro. Sir Benfro. Sir Benfro. Okay. Uh, Ceredigion a Sir Benfro. Um, achos mae'n mae corgi yn bridio hen hen um, a a bridio um Dod o Gymru, a, you know, mae'n um, mawr rhan o a hanes o a ffermio yma. A dwi'n meddwl mae'n trist iawn i gweld um, y bridio me- mewn perigl. Um, achos, you know, dim, um, dim, dim mewn ffesiwn, rwan. Achos uh, y, mae Corgi dod o Sir Benfro, was it? Um, yeah. Ydy uh, uh, Betty Safe again, fucking hell, I always forget this. Did Diogel. Diogel, yeah. Um, Ydy Diogel, ond mae'n, you know, Corgi Ceredigion mewn perigl. Um, yeah, dwi'n meddwl mae trist. A um, be arall um, and dwi'n meddwl mae'n um, ddiddorol i gweld um, sut y bridio gwahanol um, what's the right word there? Um, a d of Nathio or Kyle um or Hanol of Nathio on a Sir the 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 achos um Sir Ben Fritz I've got forgotten it already um Dim Cal Manetho is that um on you know Mount um Caridigion Flower or Maneth um uh yeah. I think that's it. Dayan, the Dwin Dwin Dayas, Achos, Skinny Dim, Gwabodai, Tham Dan, Kun, a Gubal. So I think you were saying um, it's sad that a, a dog that's uh, from Wales is a, a dying breed because fashions have changed. And it's all it's been there throughout history. Um, and it also um captures its landscape, the the differences between a dog from say Benvra and a Keredig Cardiganshire, because Keredigion and Skenny the Manethoi. No Llawr or Manethoi. Llawr or or Ach my uh Sir Benvra and Dim yn gwybod gair am fflat. Mm, yeah, dwi ddim yn gwybod. O dim mynyddio oedd bryn, is it, for hill? Well, heno yn diforol iawn, achos ddim yn, yeah, ddim yn gwybod dim byd am dan cwn, ond mae'n ddiddorol i dysgu am dan um, y, y bryd yn hen iawn. Mm. Ach, um, dal yn yna dros y blyneddoedd um, drwy um, Betty o, oh, dwi'n gwybod oh, sorry, this is really wanky oedd e'n ble yn hyd lan oedd ganry dros y ganryff so ganryff, ti'n gwybod ganryff no, something number yeah, centuries, so yeah. So, draws a ganrif. Um, my 
corgi yn wastad yn yna yn dangos y landscape gorhanol, ffermiau yn newid. Ac os dwi ddim yn um, eni yn y ffermd, um, ddim yn gwybod llawer amdan ag y cultural, pethau agricultural. So roedd yn ddiddorol i, I clywed amdan efo. And yeah, doing fan mawr or corgi. <laughs> um, do you want to do a little intro then? Rowan. Um, oh yes. Betty, yeah. Betty, good day. With nos nesa. With nos nesa, uh, nice on me, and Charlotte and Dan, Rebecca Riots. <laughs>